Hello, my name is Alan Foom, and today I'm going to talk about well results analysis, or what dry holes can tell you for the future of exploration. The key phrase here is that all discoveries are alike, but each dry hole is a dry in its own way. So that's a little homage to Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy, Russia's greatest uh, uh, novelist. And we'll look at dry holes, which is obviously a painful subject for geologists. Now, a dry hole is an exploration well that doesn't have hydrocarbons, or has hydrocarbons in such a small quantity that they're not really exploitable. And they're expensive. They can cost up to $100 million if you're going for a deep water well. And the most expensive dry hole in history was the Mukluk well in Alaska, drilled by Sohio, uh, the American arm of BP, in 1984 at a cost of one and a half billion. And that's in 1984, so that's more like three or four billion in today's money. Ouch. It's also quite painful for a geologist ego. Um, yeah, we want to get things right. We want to feel that our ideas are correct. Unfortunately, the drill bit does have a nasty habit of uh, pointing out when you got it wrong. But once you've stopped crying and the tears and the tantrums and everything else, uh, you dust it yourself down and you have to find out what can you learn from these situations. So how do we risk prospects? Now, I've got a whole video on that. But I'll just give you a little summary here just to uh, put everything into context. Now, the chance of success is the chance of a well containing hydrocarbons to a given volume. And you've got several elements that all have to work. And they all have to work because if one of them fails, you get a dry hole. So you've got your reservoir, you've got your seal, you've got your trap, you've got your charge, and you've got your source. All of them have to work. And the chance of success is the uh, product of the probabilities of all of these things that are working. So you get a probability of each one of these elements, you multiply them all together, and that gives you a chance of success. The typical chance of success in an established play is about 30% or so. You know, it can go up to about 40, 45. Um, we've got seismic anomalies, etc. cetera. Uh, but that would be around one in three, let's say. Typical chance of success for a frontier play is about 10% or less. So that's when you're going into new areas. So the majority of wells actually fail. But it's emotionally difficult when that does happen, as I can say from personal experience. And you want to integrate the dry holes into your play-based exploration to understand why wells worked, why they didn't. Now, it can be a bit challenging for older wells when uh, the people who were responsible for them aren't around anymore. So you need to do a bit of archaeology, getting all the key data together, all the logs, the reports, the seismic, putting everything together to give you a a holistic view of what's going on in the play. And you need to bear in mind that the data and ideas of contemporary geologists when they were drilled. So for example, if wells were drilled on 2D seismic, they, people had different ideas at the time. Now, these ideas may not be valid any longer, but you know these were decent, honest people that are trying to do their best. And it gives you an insight of what key are the key risks and how they're distributed spatially. So a very important part of play-based exploration. So this is an example of a table looking at two wells. Well, A and well, B. Now, this is based on a real case. I'm not, I've obviously changed the names of the companies, but the dates are correct. Um, so, well, A was drilled by Omega uh, in the late 1970s. Uh, they only had 2D data. Yes, it was drilled in valid trap. It's a very large, high feature, very large uh, anticline. Uh, yeah, there was a valid top seal. Uh, charge, well, there's some indications of hydrocarbons in the well and a few little stringers of reservoir, and that's the main reason why it failed, because there wasn't any reservoir where they drilled this particular well. It's drilled on 2D seismic. People didn't know what they were, quite what they were doing. Um, and no, they didn't have decision per permeability uh, and porosity to flow. And they had a few gas shows, didn't really get any samples. They walked away. Understandable, they were very disappointed. Company B came along. Uh, let's call them Sigma. And they shot 3D seismic. And what they could see in this particular case was basically turbidite channels going over the well. So you had areas where you had no reservoir and then discrete areas where you had submarine canyons filled with sand where you had good reservoir. You can't see that on 2D. You can see it on 3D. So yeah, trap presence, yes seal, yes charge, yes reservoir presence, reservoir effectiveness. It was dry gas with no nasties. And quite a successful uh, development for, uh, for Sigma. So have a think. What the wells? Uh, what were they targeting? What was the data they had? What worked? What failed? And how did the results compare to actual prognosis? If you got a pre-well uh, prospect proposal report, compare that together. You know, quite a bit of work, but uh, pretty useful. So different types of dry holes. So, Barafleas Lev Nikolaevich Tolstoy, 
Все открытия нефтяных месторождений похожи, а каждая сухая скважина сухая по-своему. All hydrocarbon discoveries are alike, but each dry hole is dry in its own way. So here you have a hydrocarbon discovery. Great. Ah, but was the well drilled off structure? Or was the trap absent on more than 3D seismic? Was the reservoir absent or poor? Like an example we showed uh, just a minute ago. Did we have a dry well with good reservoir, but there were no signs of hydrocarbon charge? Did we have a dry well with good reservoir, but some weak saturation shows maybe seal had failed? Or you were drilling a well that bypassed looking for a deeper play. So you obviously have data that's useful. There was no structure here that was targeted a deeper play, which may or may not have worked. But again, that can all be integrated into your play fairway exploration. So uh, from Milk of the Salamis uh, in APG, February 2020. So this is sort of modified from them. You know, did you have a fail segment? Did you have a successful segment? Did you have uh, oil and gas shows? Did you have structural closure? If no structure failed, if you had a mature source rock uh, locally, but um, no signs here, so the trap wasn't charged. Uh, did you have good reservoir? Did you have potentially top seal? So looking at all of these things together in a structured way gives you an idea of how to do dry hole analysis. And you can do systematic analysis like this for every well. So you've got um, elements, trap, source, charge, res, one, seal. And for each well, you have yes, no, or maybe. So red is the features definitely absent. Green is the features definitely present. Yellow, you're kind of not really sure. And then you can look at all the different types of wells and you can do bar charts like this. So you can see in this particular play, clearly charge is a big issue. Reservoir can be an issue. Seal can be an issue, but trap almost never is because you've got more than 3D seismic. And you can do well failure analysis by calls with various pie charts, and you can see where things, why things tend to fail when they do. So that's where you can concentrate your geological work to try to reduce the number of dry holes you have. Another way of mapping this is this is done by uh, Ian Longley, GIS Packs. They're a great company, really great people, got really great software, which I've had personal experience of using back in the day. Um, please contact them if you if you want more. And this is roughly how they would do it. Uh, this is based on some of the ideas. So you'd have for each well, uh, charge, reservoir, trap, and, uh, and seal. And you would have something where uh, you have green for success, yellow for equivalent, red for failure, and blue for unclear. And again, they've got all of this automated within their program. So please, if you want to do some of this work, give them a call. Really great people do really good work. So some real examples. So these are two examples where you have pie charts based on uh, one is a lecture by uh, by John Carlo, and one is a lecture is a detailed report by the USOGA now North Sea Transition Authority on well failure in the Central North Sea. Yes, and does include a couple of mine as well. Oops. So what tended to ha to go wrong is uh, you would tend to have uh, is you tend to have seal, then trap, then reservoir, then source and migration. In the North Sea, you've got a good source rock in the Cambridge clay. There are some migration shadows, uh, so there's a few of those. But most things tended to fail because the seal failed um, or because the, the trap failed. Uh, similar sort of story with, uh, with the analysis that Jay Carlo did in his lecture, which is available on YouTube. Again, seal's the main um, cause of failure, and I've got a, re a video on my channel on seals, uh, re uh, seals in, uh, in the petroleum context. Uh, so please have a look at that, and it's a bit of a Cinderella in terms of analysis. Okay, Rudolf and Goulding, APG Bulletin 2017, looking at different play types. So when you look at the new play, main thing you worry about is charge, whether you've got a source rock that works. You've got an extending play, well, you've got a proven source rock somewhere, but how far does it extend? And also seal becomes more of an issue. Reservoirs, not so much. When you look at mature play, like the Murray Firth in the North Sea, it's the seal that's the problem. So again, looking where things are. So some conclusions. Dry seal analysis is important. And it's emotional because particularly if you, you happen to be the person who drilled the, the dry hole. And you need to understand what was drilled and why. Particularly when you're looking at older stuff.
you know, why was it drilled? What worked? What didn't work? What lessons can we learn for the future? Because you want to learn things for the future because you want to do things better. Key products are things like the well results table, map showing the well results, and you integrate all that into play fairways. So thank you very much. Happy drilling, happy analysis. Please like, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Thank you.